Hello and welcome to Millennium News Hour. I'm Tanziva Naurin. In today's bulletin, we will get you detailed news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines of the day. Pelosi to step down as top Democrat. Khashoggi killing lawsuit, Saudi prince has US immunity. Lake refuses to concede in Arizona governor's race she lost. Top progressive Jaipal passes on democratic leadership race. Lake effect snow paralyzes parts of western northern New York. Greiner has begun serving sentence in Russian penal colony. More Twitter workers flee after mask hardcore ultimatum. After 13 nominations, Diane Warren finally gets her Oscar. Pfizer booster spurs immune response to new Omicron subtypes. Russian strikes force Ukraine to face hours-long power cuts. War North Korea missile test loom over Asia-Pacific summit. Gaza fire kills 21 from one family during birthday party. Twenty killed in van accident as record floods haunt Pakistan. Senegal turned Sadio Mane out of World Cup after operation. Qatar bans sale of beer at World Cup stadiums in about phase. And Manchester United takes appropriate steps after Ronaldo interview. Now news in detail. Democrat Nancy Pelosi, the trail blessing first female speaker of the US House of Representatives, Yesterday said she will step down as party leader when Republicans take control of the chamber in January. I will not seek re-election to democratic leadership in the next Congress, Pelosi said in an emotional speech on the House floor. The hour has come for a new generation to lead the Democratic caucus. The 82-year-old Pelosi's departure from party leadership marks the end of an era in Washington and comes after Republicans secured a slim House majority in last week's midterm elections. Democrats retained Senate control. Democratic President Joe Biden hailed Pelosi as a fierce defender of democracy and the most consequential speaker of the House of Representatives in our history. Because of Nancy Pelosi, the lives of millions and millions of Americans are better, even in districts represented by Republicans who voted against her bills and too often vilify her, Biden said in a statement. History will also note her fierceness and resolve to protect our democracy from the violent, deadly insurrection of January 6, when supporters of Republican former President Donald Trump attacked the U.S. Capitol, he said. Currently second in the presidential line of succession after Vice President Kamala Harris, Pelosi said last week that a decision on her future would be influenced by the brutal attack on her husband in the run-up to the November 8 midterms. The Biden administration ruled on Thursday that Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has immunity from a lawsuit over the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, drawing immediate condemnation from the slain journalist's former fiancé. 
Khashoggi was killed and dismembered in October 2018 by Saudi agents in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, an operation which US intelligence believed was ordered by Prince Mohammed, who has been the kingdom's de facto ruler for several years. A spokesperson for the Saudi consulate in Washington could not be reached for comment on Thursday evening after business hours. This is a legal determination made by the State Department under long-standing and well-established principles of customary international law, a spokesperson for the White House National Security Council said in a written statement. It has nothing to do with the merits of the case. The spokesperson referred further questions to the State and Justice Departments. Refusing to concede Carrie Lake, the defeated Republican candidate for Arizona governor, said Thursday she is assembling lawyers and collecting evidence of voters having trouble casting ballots on election day as she considers her next move. Lake, who was endorsed by Donald Trump, traveled to the former president's Mar-a-Lago club in Florida on Thursday, her campaign spokesman said. The Washington Post first reported that she attended a luncheon held by the America First Policy Institute, an advocacy group created by former Trump advisors. In a two-and-a-half-minute video, Lake made no mention of giving up in her most extensive public comments since losing the election. Before the election, she had refused to say that she would concede if she lost the race to Democrat Katie Hobbs. Pramila Jayapal, the chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, took herself out of the running Friday for Democratic leadership in the next Congress by announcing a bid for a second term to lead one of the largest groups of lawmakers in the party. In a letter to her progressive colleagues, Jaipal of Washington noted the series of achievements the caucus had during her tenure as chair. She also acknowledged the challenges House Democrats face as they become the minority party in January. Jaipal's tenure began when President Joe Biden, whom she has dubbed the most progressive president in history, came to office. Jaipal, who became the first Indian-American woman elected to the House, spent the last few months exploring a run for a senior leadership post after the midterm elections. As Speaker Nancy Pelosi and much of her team were expected to step down and make way for new leaders. A dangerous lake effect snowstorm paralyzed parts of western and northern New York on Friday with nearly two feet of snow already on the ground in some places by mid-morning and possibly much more on the way. Residents in Buffalo awoke to blowing, heavy snow punctuated by occasional claps of thunder. The worst snowfall so far was south of the city. The National Weather Service was reporting more than two feet of snow in many places along the eastern end of Lake Erie, with bands of heavier precipitation bringing nearly 34 inches in Hamburg, New York. Schools were shuttered, Amtrak stations in Buffalo, Niagara Falls and DPO closed Thursday and stay closed Friday. Numerous flights in and out of Buffalo Niagara International Airport were cancelled. Even before the snow began falling, the NFL announced it would relocate the Buffalo Bills Sunday home game against the Cleveland Browns to Detroit. Orchard Park, where the team's place, had seen two feet fall by mid-morning Friday. WNBA star Brittany Griner has begun serving her nine-year sentence for drug possession at a Russian penal colony, her lawyers and agents said Thursday. Griner was transferred to a penal colony in Mordovia, about 350 kilometers east of Moscow, after a Russian court last month rejected her appeal of her sentence. Her lawyers said they visited her earlier this week. Brittany is doing as well as could be expected and trying to stay strong as she adapts to a new environment, her lawyer said in a statement. The All-Star Center with the WNBA's Phoenix Mercury and two-time Olympic gold was detained in February when customs agents said they found vape canisters containing cannabis oil in her luggage at Moscow's Sheremetyevo Airport. Twitter continued to bleed engineers and other workers on Thursday after new owner Elon Musk gave them a choice to pledge to hardcore work or resign with severance pay. Some took the Twitter to announce they were signing off after Musk's deadline to make the pledge. 
A number of employees took to a private forum outside of the company's messaging board to discuss their planned departure, asking questions about how it might jeopardize their U.S. visas or if they would get the promised severance pay, according to an employee fired earlier this week who spoke on condition of anonymity for fear of retaliation. While it's not clear how many of Twitter's already decimated staff took Musk up on his offer, the newest round of departures means the platform is continuing to lose workers just as it is gearing up for the 2022 FIFA World Cup, one of the busiest events on Twitter that can overwhelm its systems if things go haywire. Diane Warren was in the recording studio with Sophia Carson to work on her new song Applause when she got an unexpected phone call earlier this year. It was David Rubin, the former president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, and he had some good news. She was getting an Oscar. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm the one who loses all the time, Warren said in a recent interview with the Associated Press. I was in total disbelief. The prolific songwriter had been nominated for Best Original Song at the Oscars 13 times, and 13 times she had gone home empty-handed, most recently at the ceremony earlier this year. Warren, who is 66 years old, was never distressed or deterred by that statistic though. She loved being in the game, but she had started to wonder if she was supposed to ever get one. Warren will be collecting her honorary statuette Saturday at the annual Governor's Awards, alongside fellow recipients Yuzhan Pelsey, Peter Weir, and Michael J. Fox, who is getting the Jean Herschel Humanitarian Award. She is the first songwriter to ever get the award. Pfizer said Friday that its updated COVID-19 booster may offer some protection against newly emerging Omicron mutants even though it's not an exact match. Americans have been reluctant to get the updated boosters rolled out by Pfizer and rival Moderna, doses switched to target the BA.5 Omicron strain that until recently was the most common type. With relatives of BA.5 now on the rise, a question is how the new boosters will hold up. Pfizer and its partner BioNTech said their updated booster-generated virus-fighting antibodies that can target four additional Omicron subtypes, including the particularly worrisome BQ.1.1. The immune response wasn't as strong against this alphabet soup of newer mutants as it is against the BA.5 strain, but adults 55 and older experienced a nearly nine-fold jump in antibodies against BQ.1.1 a month after receiving the updated booster. According to a study from the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston and the companies. That's compared to a two fold rise in people who got another dose of the original vaccine. The preliminary data was released online and hasn't yet been vetted by independent experts. Now it's time for global updates. Ukraine's electricity grid chief warned of hours-long power outages Friday as Russia zeroed in on Ukraine's energy infrastructure with heavy artillery and missile attacks that have interrupted supplies to as much as 40% of the country's people at the onset of winter. Grid operator Ukraine Ejo said outages could last for several hours, with freezing temperatures putting additional pressure on energy networks. You always need to prepare for the worst. We understand that the enemy wants to destroy our power system in general to cause long outages, Ukraine's chief executive Vladimir Kudrytsky told Ukrainian state television. We need to prepare for possible long outages, but at the moment we are introducing schedules that are planned and will do everything to ensure that the outages are not very long. The capital of Kiev is already facing a huge deficit in electricity, Mayor Vitaly Klitschko said. Some 1.5 million to 2 million people, about half of the city's population, are periodically plunged into darkness as authorities switch electricity from one district to another. Threats to peace and stability burst onto the agenda at a summit of Pacific Rim leaders in Bangkok on Friday after North Korea fired an intercontinental ballistic missile that landed near Japanese territorial waters. The missile test was a stark reminder of persisting risks of conflict in the region and beyond, on top of frictions between the big powers that threatened to unravel the global order. 
U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris and the leaders of Japan, South Korea, Canada, Australia and New Zealand convened an emergency meeting on the missile launch. This conduct by North Korea most recently is a brazen violation of multiple UN Security Council resolutions. It destabilizes security in the region and unnecessarily raises tensions, Harris said in remarks as the meeting started. We strongly condemn these actions and we again call for North Korea to stop further unlawful destabilizing acts, she said. North Korea is under United Nations sanctions for past weapons test but has not faced new sanctions this year because U.S. attempts were opposed by China and Russia in the Security Council. A Thai government spokesperson said leaders also expressed concern about the missile launch in closed-door meetings of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum on Friday. 21 victims of a fire that tore through a top-floor apartment in the Gaza Strip during a birthday party were members of the same family. Two of their relatives said Friday. Officials in Hamas-run Gaza have said Thursday night's blaze in a three-story residential building in the Javalia refugee camp was apparently fueled by stored gasoline. They said it was not clear how the gasoline ignited and that an investigation is underway. It was one of the deadliest incidents in Gaza in recent years outside the violence stemming from the Israel-Palestinian conflict. The blaze destroyed the top-floor apartment in the building home to the Abu Raya family. Mohammad Abu Raya, a family spokesman, said that the extended family had gathered for twin celebrations, the birthday of one of the children and the return of one of the adults from a trip to Egypt. A van fell into a water-filled ditch in Pakistan's flood hit south, killing 20 passengers, mostly women and children, and injuring 13 others overnight, police said Friday. The incident on a flood weekend highway took place in Sindh province on Indus Highway. The road had been dredged in several places to drain out flood water, but has not been repaired months later. Impoverished Pakistan is struggling to recover from record-breaking flooding, which killed more than 1,700 people and damaged roads and bridges. Police officer Imran Qureshi said the van was bringing passengers from Khairpur district to a famous Sufi shrine in Sewan. He said 13 of the passengers were rescued and moved to a nearby hospital. Hospital officials said 8 women and 10 children, ages 10 to 15, were among the dead. Two of the injured were said to be in critical condition. Now it's time for business news. Today's New York stock close price is 15,309.77. The NYSE composite is increased by 85.81 points or 0.56%. Tokyo stock close price is 27,899.77. The Nikkei 225 index is decreased by 30.80 points or 0.11 percent. Shanghai stock close price is 3097.2432. The Shanghai Composite Index is decreased by 18.19 points or 0.58 percent. Hong Kong stock close price is 17,992.54. The Hang Seng Index is decreased by 53.12 points or 0.29%. Bombay stock close price is 61,663.48. The Sensex Index is decreased by 87.12 points or 0.14%. Now a look of today's sports stories. Senegal star Sadio Mane has been ruled out of the World Cup after undergoing surgery for his leg injury. Bayern Munich and the Senegalese Soccer Federation said Thursday. 
Bayern said the 30-year-old Mane had an operation in Innsbruck, Austria late Thursday to reattach a tendon to the head of his right fibula bone, treating an injury he sustained playing for Bayern in a German league game against Werder Bremen on November 8. The FC Bayern forward will therefore no longer be available to play for Senegal at the World Cup and will begin his rehab in Munich in the next few days, Bayern said. Senegal team doctor Manuel Afonso earlier announced the end of Mane's lingering hopes of playing at least some part in the World Cup. Qatar banned the sale of beer at World Cup stadiums on Friday. A sudden U-turn on the deal the conservative Muslim Emirate made to secure the soccer tournament with only two days to go before the opening game. The move was the latest sign of the tension of staging the event, which is not just a sports tournament but also a month-long party, in the autocratic country where the sale of alcohol is heavily restricted. It's also a significant blow to World Cup beer sponsor Budweiser and raised questions about how much control FIFA retains over its tournament. Manchester United has initiated appropriate steps in response to Cristiano Ronaldo's explosive interview with Piers Morgan. The Premier League club's legal team was waiting to review the full footage of the 90-minute discussion in which Ronaldo criticized United manager Eric Ten Hag, teammates and the owners. Manchester United has this morning initiated appropriate steps in response to Cristiano Ronaldo's recent media interview, the club said Friday. We will not be making further comment until this process reaches its conclusion. The 37-year-old Ronaldo is in Qatar to play in his fifth World Cup with Portugal, but his future at Old Trafford looks to be over, with the forwards position widely considered untenable even before the full interview aired on Wednesday and Thursday. A potential exit has been complicated by the limited number of clubs being able to meet his reported salary of about £500,000 per week. But if he is found to be in breach of contract, a possible outcome could be the cancellation of his deal. United officials were not aware any interview had taken place and had to wait until it was broadcast on Talk TV before determining the club's legal position. Let's have a look on today's weather chart. That's all in today's news. Keep watching Millennium News 24 for latest updates. Millennium TV US and Millennium News 24 network is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiate IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all types of informative and entertainment program. Thank you.